Hey, welcome, welcome. Let's get rid of that. Sneak previews. Uh, my name is Steve Jaguar. This is another Beer Native Beer Review and a live one at that. I'm going to be reviewing, very exciting, actually. I'm going to be reviewing Northern Monks uh, collaboration with, a, normally a collaboration is with another actual, let's say, brewery, I guess, is probably a good way of, of saying it, whereas this time it is with a band which was kind of threw me off. And this was the signature beer from uh, their latest patron society subscription box. This was the one that they send you, look, a little book. And in the book, they interview just various amounts of information you can see there, where they interview the founder, uh, Russell Bissett of Northern Monk. Northern Monk is up north. Uh, near Leeds, and they even talked to the band about beer and their history. It's really quite unique. I was a bit, I was pretty excited about it because I'm into music. Uh, if you really want to know, uh, you could actually, where are we looking? Right there. You can see my little teeny drum kit that I've got there. I've got like a, if I move out of the way, ugh, mm, there's a guitar right there. So I've got, yeah, I'm very much into that. And I checked these guys out to see what kind of music they made. And I've got a little clip of that in a moment. So that's that's all very cool. Let's take a quick look at the beer itself. And, uh, you know, everyone knows I'm a big art fan. There we go. I think it's, I keep saying Fingathing because I really want it to be that. But I think it's Fingathing because they capitalized the T and the G. And if we rotate that around, the, I did it the wrong way, but. Check the art. That rocks. Yes, it does. You see like the, the dude with the hand. So that, a lot of that kind of crazy art features in one of their recent videos called Superhero Music. So go on YouTube, type in Fig a Thing, Superhero Music. It'll come up anyway if you just type the band name. You can go check out some of their music. But I'm going to give you a little sampler in two seconds because that's I thought that would be appropriate part of this. Let us introduce the side panel here. Uh, boom. So Northern Monk. You've surely you've heard of Northern Monk. If you're not, this is a dark one. A seasonal beer called Death. Uh, maybe badly timed for our, our second or is it third lockdown here in the United Kingdom. Uh, but yeah, they are fantastic brewery. There's nice little photos there. Go check them out at northernmonk.com. You can learn a lot about them. You can see they have um, nice tap rooms in Leeds and Manchester. But that and that probably ties into the 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 fan collaboration with Finger Thing, who are from Manchester. So they've been going for 20 years, etc. So that's worth worth taking a look at it. If you're looking to bu buy this beer, uh, you can. I went just looking for it outside of outside of the box. Hey, subscription box joke. Uh, evening Moments Beer Reviews. Hey, awesome. I love having somebody watching. It makes me feel a lot more like I'm not just talking to myself, which is most of the time. I found it here. I found the beer at CuriousShop.com uh, UK Beer for £6.30, which is, yeah, that's hefty. But it had a very good description because the description I've got is, let's say, long. And they did a good job of kind of wrapping it all into, I, I'm guessing maybe their own description. And you can see here, it's an IPA. It's actually a New England IPA, 6.7%. And they touch on some of the hop varieties that are in here. The idea of it being a can of whoop ass is that it's a double dry hopped IPA focusing specifically on Australian hops. That's what they went for in this one. Um, the Citra Incognito for a little bit of oomph. Uh, other hops involved are, let me just see if they say it here, Galaxy, here we go, um, led by Galaxy. So Galaxy hops in there for your citrus, and they, they don't mention it here, but it's got Ella T90 as well uh, in there. That's actually on teeny writing on the can. Uh, but Ella is like a, a child of Galaxy, and so that's just going to double back the Galaxy offering with, that's probably where they're talking. They're talking in the little book about candied, Mandarin as a flavor profile, which is neat. I like the sound of that. Oh, tinned mandarins. That's it. Tinned mandarins. Tinned? I've never bought a tinned mandarin before. 
but I guess that's where they, it look, I'm guessing it's candy. I'm making that up maybe, but that sounds awesome. Uh, they're also, they're leading me down the tasting road of pineapple, passion fruit, all of the things that are, let's say pretty distinctive for things like Vic Secret, which I think they mentioned here. And of course there is, all, well, Vic Secret obviously offers sexiness, which of course every beer needs. And then they mention, I think, Enigma T90. They mention Enigma T90 as well, which is awesome. Because some of the, I saw about three different flavor profile notes, and they mentioned uh, red currant, which is an odd one, right? That's like Rabina, I suppose, currant, or that black currant. But that's a unique flavor profile, but that is associated with Enigma. So kind of get everything. I saw there was lychee mentioned once, but I don't know. Oh, there it is there. Yeah. Talking about lychee. So lychee. Uh, I don't really know where lychee is coming from, but that's cool. I'm excited to taste it. And oh, there's an, oh, what? There's two lines of hops on here. I didn't, I didn't read the second line. That's where it says Citra Incognito. It says Topaz. Ah, so Topaz hops. There you go. Look up Topaz. It says lychee. I'm nearly positive. So that's pretty awesome. So this is a really interesting beer. Uh, I'm and I'm obviously relatively pumped to crack it open. But first, a little bit of history on where I got it. The Patrons Project. Uh, you can see my screen share just there. This is where I, where you can buy an individual if you don't want to join the Patrons Project. Patrons, patrons Project, uh, let's see, let me just skip to the Patron Archives. They they send you, watch my unboxing video. There's, um, there is nine beers in the box. Uh, I was a little bit like, eh, about three of them because there were like some I could get in supermarkets. And I thought, seems like filler, you know? I'd rather pay a little bit less for the six really like high end ones, but uh, some of these were in. I'll make the screen a little bit bigger so you can actually there. Some of these were in the box, which was pretty awesome. I got some retro patients project specials, uh, and some of them are very cool. Uh, what's particularly cool about the patients project one, and I haven't done this yet, is that if you uh, let's, I got to get more better at my button pushing just there there's a peel label it's not focusing very well but i should be able to pull that back and get surprise information i didn't already know about it so we can do that together because i haven't done any of these cans yet not even the ones i was waiting yeah <laughs> uh so that's pretty awesome the subscription box if you're wondering about it let's bring that up in big again there's a bunch of different ones there's Carthusen sold out. They all say sold out. I think that's a bit of a marketing play because if you really want to sign up to it, it said sold out. And I went, all right, well, whatever. I joined the waiting list. Like a month later, I got an email saying thumbs up. And I even got the opportunity to invite a friend to jump the queue and become part of it. So there's a little bit of social marketing that goes on there. I didn't invite a friend because I didn't, I didn't read the instructions. Uh, and it said it expired today, November 6th. So I didn't get the opportunity to bring anybody in. That would have been very cool to offer that to somebody watching a live a live show. Uh, it's 33 pound plus shipping. But for nine beers, like considering this one was six pound in that shop, it actually doesn't seem too bad, except for those six that were a bit, bit boring. I know that's hard to read, but that's the idea behind it. There are other options where you can get twice a, twice a month, one time a month. There's a good look at the box right there. So, and then you can see what's inside it. So they they start selling them. If you just want to buy this exact box, I think if there's extras left over, you can then just buy the box for a little bit more expensive than it was originally was. And, and I think it looks pretty worth it, this one. So if you're curious about the band, the band connection, this is them, Finger Thing. I had never heard of them, and I feel kind of like a fool. There's, look at that. Anyone for a can of whoop ass. They've even got it advertised on the front of their site, which is pretty cool. You can learn about the beer both from them. Ah, oh, there it is, Topaz. I should just come here for the description. Pretty good, right? Main event turns 30. You can check their discography. And if you're curious what they're like, and I really was, ooh, Leeds Tap Room is a great day out from a reliable source. Um, check this out. This isn't the video where this cool art comes from. Check it out. But just this little teeny clip of an improvised 
lockdown session that they put on YouTube. Yeah, it gets funkier. It's pretty good. It's like a DJ and a guy and a bass player, and they did all sorts of stuff. And if you listen to some of the production values on the stuff, on what they release on their albums, I was I was quite keen on them. There's another band I like from Bristol called The Allergies, which is a little bit more funk. Craig Charles likes to play it on his Saturday night show, but it's similar, you know? I was pretty happy with it. All righty. So that's a quick intro. Uh, let's get down to the, to the bouge. Cave Troll Jury. All right. So this is the 1406 Awesome Art offering for the Patrons Project. And we're going to pop it. Oh, they hit the name. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lychee is pretty distinct. You ever, you ever open up lychee? I've never had any lychee any out of anywhere other than a can of lychees that maybe I'm making a stir fry or something. I don't know if you can get them raw or natural or I've not had that. But that comes across pretty quickly with citrus and lychee. I'm not getting red currant or anything like that. Bit of grass. All right. I'm going to take a little can sip because I'm a realist. Just to see. I like I like finding out what ooh. Wow. The pine hit or the, the resin hit is fast and long. Ooh, it's very lychee. Lychee have this have this dryness to them, right? I was questioning the lychee. I am a fool. This is good. All right, let's uh get my fancy, not so fancy glass up. It's even got a paleness of lychee as opposed to an a red juiciness it's very thick the head is very teeny bubbles Ooh, really nice kind of soapy all right i'm getting too enthusiastic i'm over pouring i don't need that much in the glass right now check it out not bad right but you know let's not judge a book by its cover just because it looks look at the head just sticking around got all day all day that's what it's saying to me open up a can Opening up a can of whoop ass. Hey, the first time I ever heard can of whoop ass, I said this on the Patrons Project, was in, I turned, I looked it up. Made me feel really old. It was a sitcom. I watched it from 1995. I was like, oh, it's like 25 years ago. No, it is 25 years ago. That's a long time ago. Second time I heard of can of whoop ass. Lois, why did you buy this? It was on sale. All right, so I'm going to have a little sip of this. Wow, it's got a hard grapefruit bitter. It was more late. It was, yeah, I'm getting lychee. I'm getting dry lychee. I don't know what a tin mandarin is. I was expecting that was going to be like a, a sweetness, but it's it's pretty dry. It's lasting. Give me a second. Give me two seconds just to let it. Uh, wash around the, the palate a little bit. It's punchy. What is it? 6.7%. But that's not that's not overriding it at all. This is one of those ones where it's very much bringing out the hops uh, and not making it seem boozy. I don't know. Some people like boozy beers. Some of the double IPAs I've had recently, they're, they're, they feel a bit cocktail-y in their booziness. Uh, I'm not really getting that here at all which I'm pretty happy about. So I'm getting pretty light tropics, really faint pineapple, red currant. Am I getting that? Not really. That's the enigma, but it's a... Yeah, a bit of melon though. That's part of the same hop. So let's leave it. Let's let it go, right? I think it when you look at the, the flavor profile that they were writing about when it was released, it very much was a tick box exercise. Like reflecting upon it now was a tick box exercise on the flavors associated with all the hops they included. That doesn't mean that when you add all those hops, you automatically achieve 
every single one of those flavor profiles, right? There are going to be ones that are just going to completely hide the others. And if you really wanted to achieve red current, I don't think I necessarily would have mixed it so hard with, let's say, Victoria's Secret, maybe, which is going to, which is dominating at the moment, along with Topaz and probably the Galaxy Ella, which is actually the primary hop. It did say, it didn't say, give me, uh, didn't give me weights and measures, but that's, I think that that's the strong one. Yeah. Galaxy Ella, a bit of Vic Secret, and absolutely that Topaz Lychee. I don't know how it's so prominent, given it was like the last hop on the list. Mouth feels fantastic. I nailed the temperature. I'm really pleased with that. I had some criticisms for not being accurate on my on my temperature. Okay, let's score it up. Oh, 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 this the big reveal. What am I talking about? Let's do it. Let's do it, you and me. Bullman, you're here to see. Oh, I got a cartoon. I'm having to watch this on the screen, not because I can't see what I'm doing. Check that out. It's sticky. No wonder it's six pounds. Oh, I got what well, I got a Spotify thing. Well, now you do as well if you capture the screen. And there's the notes. You can see the Vic Secret Galaxy Enigma a la Topaz Citra Incognito. And yeah, IBU 20. And some special notes from the brewer, but I think those are similar notes to what's inside the book, but that's pretty awesome. I get a little bit of bonus. Very cool. I'm excited about gadgetry like this. And you know what that means. This is the first time I've ever had one that has a pullback label on it. So let's rate it for packaging. Is the art cool? Uh, yeah, it's pretty damn awesome. It's totally in line with the latest video from the band. So that's obviously influenced. Is the pack, and I'm, I would say, is it the best art I've ever seen? It's close. It's good, right? I'll give it a four, though. But packaging, oh, bam, zoom, like, oh, mind blown flip back art that's pretty awesome that's a lot of extra effort it's just a can like i i might just throw a five at it just because i'm i would other than having like uh egotistical fancy pants bottles which i don't really rate it doesn't the the extra information about the beer for beer enthusiasts and a little bit of extra it looks like some kind of spotify release information for a new song like that's pretty awesome for a collaboration right we're gonna go five on that so that's eight Pretty solid start. Um, the accuracy for New England IPA, 6.7%. Just just creeping out of the IPA, not but not a double IPA. It's thick. Awesome mouthfeel. OD, lactose. Bloody brilliant. You know, I think they nailed it. So accuracy, might get a five on that one. How could it not? It is accurate. Is it, ac is it as accurate as it could be? I don't know how, see how it could be less accurate. So yeah, five. Uh, uniqueness. It's kind of unique for a New England IPA, just because the you know it, it went for all Australian hops. It picked out a pretty unique variety, and given the popularity of New England IPAs at the moment, it's pretty easy for them to be samey, you know. And I think their choice of hop varieties and the way they 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 the way it tastes is interesting. The lychee bit is what I really liked, so I'm gonna give them a four on that. So. They're going to A plus four. They're going to hit a 17, which is it's pretty high. That might be one of the highest I've ever rated. I'm obviously just dazzled by cool packaging. Maybe that's influencing me at the moment, but hey, I don't know. Let's do it. Uh, and is it good? Yeah. I'm pretty happy with it, man. I like it. Uh, 17, would I give it an eight or a nine? If it's straight up eight, eight seems unfair. I gave one a nine recently that I was about similar. Is it the best New England IPA ever? I think there's got to be better. I've never had the first New England IPA, which I really got to work on that as this get, getting somebody to get that over to me. I'm going to give it a nine. So that's going to be, it's going to escalate to 26 out of 30. 4.25, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Okay. Well, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you. Big, big thanks to Bullman Beer Reviews. Uh, if you're watching this video, go check that out on YouTube as well for just even more awesome beer reviews and to learn even more. So 
Thank you for watching this particular review. If you're watching after the fact, then the usual stuff applies. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up. People who like beer or who like the Patrons Project or Patron Society who are like leads, who like beer with clever labels and gadgetry so that they find it when they're searching the internet and searching YouTube. Thanks very much. I'm going to sign off right now. My name's Steve Jaguer. This has been a Beer Native Beer Review. Keep drinking awesome beer.